Hey everyone, um, I'm David Rao. I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org and I just wanted to um, tell you a little bit about recorder centers and how I use them and I've been doing it a lot with students recently. I posted a lot of pictures of it on Instagram and Facebook and stuff and so I wanted to share sort of what I use and how I'm doing it so you can sort of see a better idea of the process. Um, so with recorder centers, I or any centers, <laughs> I say use, reuse, reuse, reuse. Find a million different ways you can use that resource because, uh, well, a lot of times you have a really great resource and you want to you really get a lot of use out of it. And also, the more you use it, the more students understand it. So I'm just going to use, uh, as a preview, I'm going to talk about um, the my Fishing for a Melody bundle, which is um, a, just a bundle of things I made a couple years ago for recorders. And it, generally, it's to teach kids how to improvise on recorders. Um, but I've used it for a lot of different ways. So in the um, in the actual bundle, I have four different centers, um, and I'll show you all of those in just a second. But the way I introduce it, I don't introduce it as centers. Um, I start, at, you know, I'm teaching recorders and doing a lot of with younger students, a lot of echo playing and note identification and melodies and all sorts of things. And one day, the first day, um, I sort of sneak in. Um, as a whole group, I sneak in Station 2. I start with Station 2. Station 2 is a card that looks like this, um, and it has just the note at the front that you play and then a rhythm. I don't know, is this backwards? Because my phone is backwards? I can't tell. Anyway, um, so it has the letter at the front and then a rhythm. And so we read the rhythm, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, and then we play on that letter for that whole rhythm. So G, 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 G. So then I go to another card, and I do... Uh, B, and then we do B, 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 and they're not all that rhythm. There are other rhythms in this. Um, and actually, you could do a couple things. You could put the actual cards on the dot cam so then students see that you have cards, or what I've done is I have a PDF copy of this whole center, and I just project that, and that's pretty easy. Um, so we go through that, and we spend a little bit of time, five minutes on that, six minutes on that, and then we go to the next activity and let that sit. The next day... Um, I might use this station two as a warm up, and so we go through and we do six or seven or whatever, um, and then we we go through and I switch over to station three, and station three is the same basic thing. It's got your rhythm, but at the front instead of one letter it has two. It has a B or a G, so I say okay, you have to play this rhythm. You can play either B or G, and this is a bad example because I never start with B G. I usually start with B A. And I say you play this whole rhythm on B or A. I don't care which one you play. It's going to sound a little weird, but that's fine. And so I let them do B or A, and it does sound a little terrible, but whatever. They're deciding. Um, I give I give them my own example first. So I'll, I'll play B, 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 A, A, A. And then I'll do, oh, I'm going to try it a different way because I can do whatever I want. B, B, A, A, B, B, A. And then I you know do it another way or whatever. Um, and so the kids, they see me model it, and then they try it, and they think it's great. We spend five or six minutes on that. And we go through, and it lets kids do B, A, A, G, and then A, B. Or sorry, B, G. So it's only B and A and G, and they can do whatever combination. But none of these cards have three letters, so it's one of the two. And so for this, kids are always a little nervous that they're doing it wrong. And I say, the only way you can play this wrong is if you don't do the rhythm, ta, t, 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 ta, or if you don't play A or G. If you're playing B, you're playing it wrong. <laughs> so either play A or G, and you're fine. Um, so we do that station, um, and then we put it away. The next day they come in, I actually give them some station time. We run through the how both of those work, and then in a bag, um, I have the two stations. And so I, I've separated them out by color so that I can see easily which is which. But the one with just one letter is green, the one with two letters is blue. And so I separate them into small groups, usually a group of about three or four in a group, and I hand them a bag. And there are enough cards in here that they can separate it out so each kid um, will have about, I don't know, six to eight or nine cards. Um, so if you're in a group of four, I say two kids take the blue ones, two take the green, and what I have them do is I have them do one card. So you start with your one card, you play it. Make sure you know how to play it right. Try another card, play it, play it all the way through, and then play it like this, play both at a t two at a time. 
and then switch it and play it like this and play two at a time. Then you get a new card with a different rhythm and a different uh, note, or if you want, you play that. Add it into your group of three. Do it a different way, do it a different way. And I have them do that with all one color. So if I were doing it, I might just get the green cards and I would do all of it with the green cards. And I have them do that for about 10 minutes. Um, and they make a nice long melody. And they're not working with a partner, they're doing it on their own, they're just using a partner to share cards. Um, so I have them do that, and then after about 10 minutes, I have them switch with the other people in their small group, so they get experience with the green and the blue, both stations. They love that. I'm this whole time circling through, monitoring, making sure they're following the procedure, um, but it's just nice that you know, they get the chance to do both, they get a little anonymity, but they already know, because I spent the last time, the last two classes, they already know how this works. So day four, um, we're working on note reading, we're working on improvisation, on getting them to play so that they don't feel like they're doing something wrong, that if, they, if they're doing it, it's okay to sound a little different or to, to be unsure about what you're gonna play, that's improvisation. Um, so I would use stations two and three as a warm up, the blue and the green cards, because they just spent the last couple days doing that. And then I add in station one, and station one looks like this, and it's notes on the staff. And so then, you know, we're spending time reading. We've been doing a lot of this anyway, but it's only four at a time. We go through, some, sometimes I'll have them, I have, my general pr procedure is say it first, so B, B, G, B, and then I have them do the finger practice. So on their recorder, I have them as they're reading, they say it and they practice like this. B, B, G, B. And if this is flipped around, it's the phone, it's not me. I have my left hand on top because I know what's up. Um, and so they do B, B, G, B, and then I have them play it. So anyway, this station, I have them do this on the overhead with my PDF. We do several of these. We don't take forever because I don't want them to get burnt out on it. We do several of these and then maybe we'll go on to something else that day. Um, the next day I do a little bit of this and then I bring in station four. I'm just slowly bringing them in. And this is the last station and basically it's two notes that are given to you and then two rhythms that you have to decide. And so I say you can play B, B, G and then I let them do whatever. So B, B, G, 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 G or whatever, B, B, G, A, A, G, or whatever they want. I, I play it for them several times to give them examples to show them I could do it different every single time, and that's fine. And so then we do it, and we play it together, and then we try another one, and we try another one. So we, we do the, those next two stations, and then day six, I give them a bag with just the red and the yellows printed out, laminated, cut up in a bag, and it's like the last day we did stations, only now it's with the two new ones. So now they're doing the two ones. And now I see that this looks like ketchup and mustard. I don't know, I didn't plan that. Okay, <laughs> so, um, and then, you know, maybe we'll, the next day we'll go back to normal stuff. The eventual goal is that they'll get a bag with all four stations in it. And then they could separate out, each kid could have their own station or whatever. There are a lot of different opportunities for mixing that in. Or maybe it's like, well, we really need to go back or whatever, and I give them the stations. Um, my ultimate, ultimate goal is that I do recorder karate at my school. And I, the first year I did it, I was like, what do I do when I'm testing? What do I do with the other kids? I don't know. So these stations are really helpful. And if you've done it before you get to recorder karate testing, uh, they know the procedure, they know how it works. So when you get there for recorder karate, you could say, great, here are your stations and you all are gonna be playing. And I'm gonna take one set of four kids at a time and I'll test them. So then all the other kids are occupied with stuff that they already know how to do. And if you have them do a day of just two centers and then a day of the other two centers, they feel really strong on each one. They know how each one works. Um, and then they can sort of work them together. Another thing that I've had them, done is, had them do is um, you might have a day where you say, okay, because the first day I did it, I had them do all green cards. And after 10 minutes, I switched to all blue cards. You could say, now I want you to do some green and some blue. This is actually really hard for them because they have to think through so that when they get when they hit a blue card that they're not scared about switching between the letters or that they know how to do the letters. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are just like an infinite amount of possibilities with this. You could pull out and have them do all greens. You could pull out and have them do all blues. You could mix it in, sort of whatever you want to do. 
So some, some ideas about the actual centers. Um, so I sort of walked you through my process and how I use it for a lot of different things. Like I said, use it, reuse it, reuse. And if you spent the time to print on cardstock and spent the time to cut them all out and laminate them and put them in baggies, you should reuse the heck out of these with multiple grade levels. That's what I do. Um, but totally do that. So one of the things that I do in my centers is I always do front and back. So on this side, it's stick notation. On this side, it's standard notation. I want them to be able to do both. So um, uh, it's really funny the first day I did these. Um, I went and I was listening to a kid and he had like five in a row and I was like, that's amazing. Can I make it really hard for you? And he's like, yeah. And I flipped over a couple cards and he tried it again. He's like, that was hard. <laughs> like, I didn't have it in me to say like, it's the same rhythm, like, but it is. It's ta, ti, 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 ta, ta, ti, 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 ta. I just happen to have it this way. You could have, you know, one, a B on one side and a G on the other side. If you, I mean, it's ho however you want to print them. I have it printed so that it's the same thing, just with different types of notation. Um, it, it might be fun to switch, say, so have something different on each side, and then it really does, you know, switch things up. Um, I have it set up so that I have about, I think that there are four or five, like, pages um, in each little mini station. And I make eight copies of each of those. So there's there are quite a few cards in there. And I have it set up so that I have um, either groups of three or four kids in each group um, and I make eight sets I make eight station sets so that means if you have three at a station that's about 24 kids if you have four at a station that's 32 kids that should get most class sizes I don't know a lot of people who are over 30 kids I'm sorry if you are um, but if you do eight stations you're not making 30 sets that's too much if you make eight sets and really mix it up and have enough cards um, it's good enough. Um, I always laminate. I always cut them out myself. Um, I for like for these, I did one color per station, and they're on colored cardstock, um, and that's worked really well for me. Um, the cardstock keeps it so that the kids they don't accidentally tear or whatever. But it's nice to have the different colors because if I'm running behind, I can just grab a bag with a color, and I know what it is already. Um, it also helps kids sort of associate the activity with the color. Um, it also just helps me know like, oh, those kids are struggling. Well, they're on the greens or they're on the blues or whatever. It just gives me sort of a better idea. Um, so I would say one color per station type. I thought about doing one color per baggie so they wouldn't mix them up, but that just ended up, I thought it would be too confusing. Um, so I didn't do that. Um, I have two stations to a bag right now. So right now my kids are still doing the blues and the greens. Um, and eventually I'll do the reds and the yellows in their own bag. But you could do two or three or four in a bag. You could mix it up. Color coordinating, it makes things a lot easier. Um, and I think that the numbers of three or four to a station work pretty well for small groups. Um, I, I tell them for these small groups, I say, you know, you're not working together. You are just sharing cards. So it's not like two kids are looking at the same cards and playing the same thing because that turns into let's talk about it and let's like spend all of our time fighting about what card we're going to play. So I have them just, so it saves me time. I don't make as many sets, but I have them share the cards that are in there. So I, generally that works pretty well. I had a couple kids the last time who were like, well, we are spending the time to make sure that each of us get five each, five cards each. And I was like, just take a handful. <laughs> like, but that's like not how I think. Um, so I have, Tracy says, how many groups do you typically have going at one time? I, I have my whole class going. So this last time I did. So I had eight little, eight bags of stations going at a time. And each bag has a couple stations in it. So the activity, they're really not doing all of that many different things, which saves my brain. So I'm not thinking like, oh, they're doing that and they're doing that and they're doing that. They're all basically doing the same activity, but it's eight little mini groups. And eight, eight works well for me because the cat cards don't scatter so long and are so far away and they don't get lost. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, anyway, I, I think small groups are great. I think stations are great. Sorry, Tracy, I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> I think small groups are great. I think stations are great. I love using and reusing and reusing and reusing. 
And like I said, I start with that as whole group instruction at, at the smart board with my PDF. I just use it over and over. Um, so don't feel like, well, first of all, don't if you get something like this, don't think that you should start with a day of stations because that is overwhelming. You know, if, if you're like, here are these four different activities that you need to do, and you should probably remember what color they are because when you get there, you're going to have to do it. And I mean, kids are just, they're going to be confused when they get there. Even though I, um, along with the stations, I have little signs that you could put at each station that says station one and gives examples. I mean, even with that, it's too much. So that's why I try and mix it in with whole group instruction first and give them that experience. And I took a, a class on critical thinking in the arts, and they always say model, 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 model for your kids so they can see. And especially with improvisation, I do this really on purpose so that I model. You can do it basically any way you want. And with these stations, it's nice because it, like once they, when they get to the green, it, that's just easy to do because there's really no decision for them. When they get to the blue, they have to make a decision, A or G. But the nice thing is there's enough structure. Well, this is the rhythm you're going to do, and you only have these two notes. It's not like play a melody with any note you want, any rhythm you want. Like you've given them some structure, and so this makes it a little bit less scary. But the more that I can demonstrate, like, let me do it like this, 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 it shows them, um, it shows them how to do it. Um, but, yeah, I always start with whole group, and then I do stations. Okay, I, there are a couple questions. Uh, Lindsay says, uh, how do you handle them all playing something different at the same time? I wear earplugs. Um, I take a Valium. No, I don't do either of those things. Um, I, I, I just sort of, I, I say don't play so loud, and I, I go around to, that's a terrible answer for you probably, but I, I go around to each station. I'm like, man, you sound so good, but, we're, you know, we're playing quietly. You don't want to play too loud. I just have to get used to the cacophony a little bit, and I'm the kind of teacher who I love structure and I love lines. I'm the kind of teacher who's like, nope, we're going to walk down the hallway and try that line again. But there are times where I've learned that it's okay if kids are talking or it's okay if kids are doing things independently. And as long as I'm circling around, I mean, two things. One, I'm checking to make sure they're actually doing the activity and they're doing it right. And then as I'm walking around, I can say, oh, that sounds so good, but you're a little loud. You know, there's, there's that thing. But, so that I'm, ch I'm checking in with them. The other thing about circling is it's sort of like a hawk circling. You know, like the little mice who are doing their stations know that they can't get away with anything. So <laughs> me circling sort of helps keep the chattiness or whatever down. I never spend more than a minute at a station. I, I play and then I circle. But... Um, one other thing, as I'm circling, I'm taking pictures to put on my school website, and I'm taking pictures to send home to a couple of those parents, or I'm checking in. Um, sometimes when I circle, I take my clipboard with me, and I do a little assessment as I go. Sometimes um, as I'm going around, I don't take my clipboard, but I stop and I listen to kids. Or if a kid is really struggling, I pull a specific card, and I say, try this one, that I know the rhythm is not as hard, or I know that their choice could be a little bit easier. Um, but it's nice to be able to do that, and it makes me think of those teachers who, I, I don't know if this happens at your building, who get a sub so that they can do testing or small group work. What? Um, I never get that. So it's nice to be able to go around and feel like I'm having this one-on-one -on -one interaction while everyone else is still busy doing something that's curricular. Um, okay, anyway, I've talked for too long. I should go. But um, thanks so much for checking in. Uh, these are just some centers that I use. Um, oh, and one more thing. I posted this on Instagram today. But um, So if you have bags with cards, I use bags all the time to separate out cards or to separate out any manipulative or whatever. And I have always been annoyed because, of course, you get it back from kids. And kids have done their thing, and it's great. And then you close it, and then they're trying to close it, and there's air in there. Well, where did I put my... Um, I realized because the... That I saw some math kit that had like dice or something in it and I looked at the bag and there was a hole in it so that you could close it and fold it down and uh, it would the air would empty out so I have been going through <laughs> this hole punch to like all of my bags today and I've been punching holes in them and it's amazing because then if you press down on it all the air leaks out and the bag is zipped shut it's just like 
blown my mind. <laughs> so anyway, go through and punch holes in all your bags because um, it means that you can then fold them close. And then I, to store them, I put them in tubs or I, you know, I put them in some, um, a bigger Ziploc or whatever. And it's just been that, that little tip. Oh my gosh, has changed my life for centers. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope that this helped a little bit. I hope you're not scared of centers. Centers can be scary if you've never done them. Introduce it slow, give the scaffolding, show students how to do it. And then they won't do it wrong. You won't feel like they're all doing it wrong all at once. You can tell that they're doing some of the, the right things. So anyway, um, thanks so much for watching. If you have questions, put them in the comments or shoot me an email um, at make moments matter. Sorry, make moments matter at gmail.com. Um, and I've been posting some of the pictures of these centers and things on my Instagram, which is make moments Matt or music ed or make moments Matt, one of the two. You can find me there um, and it'll give you some ideas um, of seeing kids actually doing it. All right, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Oh, and if you're from Michigan, I'm going to be at the Michigan Music Conference tomorrow and I'm presenting at 4 p.m. about grants and fundraisers. Um, I would love to see you there. I hope I. Um, I hope I get to see you and catch up and meet up. Thanks so much. Bye.